I think that's it, yeah. Okay, so yeah, welcome especially to, to, to everyone and to newcomers. Um, and I just wanted to quickly share my experience of why uh, part of the reason I'm so passionate about this group and the teachings we do here. Uh, mainly, we do the Course in Miracles. I also talk about my two spiritual teachers. Uh, one is Dr. David R. Hawkins, the other is Muji. Um, and I had a white light spiritual experience with Muji, who's a classical teacher of enlightenment and non-duality and self-inquiry, and Dr. Hawkins, who's also a teacher of enlightenment. But he, for people who are interested in 12-step fellowships, uh, he was an alcoholic, and when he went into AA, his sponsor was Bill Wilson, but he went on to become an enlightened teacher in his own right. Um, and uh, the thing with the Counting of Beliefs, which originates from The Course in Miracles, Lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles. So here we go into, now, I'm not, um, okay. So le Lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles states a few things. One of them is that God did not create cancer and so it is not real. And uh, another way of saying that is, uh, which uh, I got from Hawkins, is I cancel my belief in cancer. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Now, here's the thing, because uh, a lot of people are new here. Um, when I, uh, I was in active food addiction, I had several addictions, and also I had, this is the power, I just want to uh, share the power of doing spiritual work. I had kidney failure, I had gout and asthma, and I used the spiritual work and all of those illnesses left. Hawkins, as well, did the Course in Miracles, and he had 23 illnesses leave him uh, through doing the work. He also set up, um, he set up uh, a group in America for people with grave illnesses, illnesses like cancer, myosteves gravis, AIDS. In that group, people, you know, people's illnesses also left. So when I when um, also I had a spiritual experience when someone gave me a DVD of Hawkins. So I knew he was telling the truth and all my illnesses left. And so get, getting into the mystical nature of letting go belief systems and the power they have on manifesting things uh, is, is extraordinary. It does, take, um, it does take a huge shift and I'm not against, you know, um, people using whatever works for them. But my experience is, you know, the, the spiritual stuff can be immensely powerful. Also, um, so, it's whatever, whatever belief um, is held, and beliefs can be with illnesses, they can be around people, uh, they can be around anything, they can be around relationships, uh, so you just can't cancel them and they can, it's very, very powerful in releasing stuff. The other thing is um, beliefs can have belief systems. So when you cancel things, you want to also, uh, you might have symptoms you can cancel. Uh, you might have different aspects of the illness. You can also cancel those as well. They can also, you can also cancel scientific belief systems as well. Um, you, you could, um, so... Um, like uh, I had gout, so scientifically they'd say you know you have high uric acid levels and that precede a gout attack, so you could cancel. Um, I remember um, when I met, went and met Hawkins, he had had gout and he'd cancelled his belief in gout. I think he would say something like you can also cancel your belief in high uric acid levels, and his uric acid levels return to normal. You see, so you just you just cancel the belief systems that you've taken on board. So I've seen it, I've seen it work uh, with a lot of things. In terms of, so that's the thing with cancellation of beliefs. How, did, how does it work? Well, when I had, um, when I had my white light spiritual experience uh, with Muji, who asked me what, what, is, what is it that is observing my thoughts, and I had the, the white light spiritual experience. So it's like as you let go of identification with thoughts, you can connect with a field of immense light and power. 
and then you sort of see that how the belief systems, as you hold on to, what's the difference between a thought and a belief system? Well, the belief system is something that's held on with strong identification. When it's held on with strong identification, it's like a repeating thought. Like if I have a thought, the grass is green, I haven't got a belief system. It's not a thought that's like so entrenched within my ego that it's there. But if I have a belief system like um, asthma, you know, and I have the associated belief systems of how an asthma attack is triggered, then, um, you know, you, I, you can cancel that. And once it's cancelled, there's a few aspects to it, but then, you know, it, it disappears. How long did it take? You know, some of these that have manifested, they take a long time, a lot of spiritual work. But they do release. Also doing the other lessons of A Course in Miracles releases them. So, I saw then that, you know, it's just like, if there's the infinite light, you know, um, the infinite light that you can connect to when you're not in your ego, as soon as you hold these thoughts as a belief system within the ego, then they have immense power to just manifest. What, you know, and why they sort of mani manifest, for me actually, it's talked about in The Course in Miracles, and, and generally understood, when one is holding a lot of guilt uh, or shame or fear or, or, or resentment or anger, they, they help, it's kind of like a negative charge, so it's like it's looking for something that represents that negativity from the collective belief systems. So if you hold a lot of negativity, you usually pick up a pretty severe, you pretty, pick up pretty severe illnesses. As you start releasing that guilt and shame, you, tend, you probably might pick up milder reflections of that and you tend to, to release them uh, as you go off uh, and release them more. So it, it's very, very powerful. The other thing I'd, I'd like to um, sort of say is, um, it's a bit of on a tangent, but you know, you're only, um, the things, you know, the things that torment you know, just on another thing, what, you know, one of the first lessons in A Course in, Mir Course in Miracles is that all my thoughts are meaningless. And also that the table is as meaningless as the lamp, which is as meaningless as the plant. So, you know, suffering usually occurs, like if anyone's suffering from something, it's usually because it's meaningful. And if it wasn't meaningful, then you wouldn't be able to suffer from it. And that is one of the that is one of the clues. Also, you know whether whether it's a person that's tormenting you, whether it's a, a donut that's tormenting you, whether it's whatever it is, whether it's noise that's tormenting you. You know, it's because the ego has made it meaningful and important, and when it's let go of, then it has no power to torment you or everything. This is one of the great things, because I'm quite interested in enlightenment. So enlightenment, you know, you, you transcend the things, you know, and it's very, pretty similar, I mean, to people who are in 12-step groups. You know, like I was, I, you know, I go to these fellowships for food, food addiction. Let's, let's take donuts. But donuts are just a symbolism for whatever it is that, you know, whether it's alcohol, whether it's donuts, whether whatever it is, you know, or whether it's a person, it's all the same thing. It's like, when it's really, really meaningful, you become obsessed about it. And if it doesn't go right, then you're tormented. You know, if I want a donut and I can't get a donut, then it's like, it's really awful. Or, uh, but, you know, like in, in, the, in, in the big book, it talks about, you know, being placed in a position of neutrality around it. And when you're placed in a position of neutrality around something, it's like it's not important. You know, you can walk past it and not even notice it sometimes, or notice it. And that's the thing when you've got a really good spiritual connection and you've transcended something, you see. Because once um, everyone, and here's the thing, everyone, who, nearly everyone has had days when they've been really spiritually connected. And when you've been really spiritually connected, the whole day has been blissful. And every moment has been exquisite. You know, and it's not about an external thing being there or not being there. It's like there's a timeless flow throughout the day. And that's what it's like 
when the ego is not active, it's not sort of hooking in to uh, this, that, or the other. So, the thing with um, here's the thing: like, if some, if if the ego really, really wants something and is really, really obsessed by something, it's like the idea of not being obsessed or it being meaningful is like really tormenting. It's like if I was obsessed with donuts, the idea of not being obsessed with donuts might seem quite like deprivation initially. But actually having that freedom from my whole life being run by donuts is actually freedom. You, only, you can only experience that on the other side, you see. It's not that, you know, you, you don't have to, you know. And the thing is like, it's, here's the thing, it's like when you're in a low level of consciousness, Whenever you're obsessed with something, you get a hit from it. So it's like you're at this level. You're at this level of consciousness, which you're feeling not so good, and then you're obsessed by something. Um, Moody talks about it. It's like when you're obsessed with something, and you or you want something, is you've got an activated thought vibrating in the back of your ego, wanting it all the time. So really, you're not happy because you haven't got it. And when you get it that ego inflation stops and then you get a high you get a high from getting the thing you're after and then you get the thing and you're happy for a while but usually the ego starts up again and wants something different but when you're in a strong when you're when you're spiritually connected you're at the highest level of spiritual happiness i know there's one person in this room um, who's been in those states for for a significant period of time and it's like every day is blissful every moment is wonderful and and you don't really get addicted by things in the world thank you because you can't because you're already happy here's the thing once you're spiritually connected you are happy through the whole day so if you're happy through the whole day you're in those timeless flows if someone comes up to you and says like there's donuts free donuts across london you know, there's free donuts across London, but you have to get there before 4 p.m. or you're going to miss out. You would just ignore them. You know. Now, if you're obsessed with donuts and you're like in this deprived state, and someone says there's free donuts across London, you drop everything and run across London to get those donuts. So that's the difference. When you let go of the things you're obsessed about or the things you want to control. Uh, and you surrender it all to God, you're happy. And, um, and when, you're, when you're obsessed by things or you want to change Hello. or control the world, okay. you're, you're in a state of unhappiness. Right. And when you get the thing yeah. you want, you become happy. But then you can become addicted to keep getting that thing. Anyway, I'll stop it there.